So here I am again, you know, smoking that stuff and then looking at uh, the mess that I make here. Uh, Mountain Smith Workshop and Laboratory. Okay, what we have here is a, a rainbow diamond. And, you know, I, I think they're natural. I, I do. I, I, I've I checked, I cut them in half, and I can't find anything that um, that's not diamond. Okay, and what you do when you have a diamond is they glow in, I mean, see, the whole thing glows, right? You can do that to a piece of glass, and it doesn't do that. But diamonds glow in all colors. And, um, hmm. Anyway, like that, kind of, you know, that's not like just reflections. If you do that to glass or something, it doesn't do anything. Uh, I have a, a, <laughs> a piece of glass with, like, silver stuff behind it um, that's, you know, like a decoration thing. And, and, you know, you hit it with the laser and stuff, and it doesn't do anything. It doesn't do anything because... It's not carbon. Carbon has carbon-14 in it. And what we're doing is stimulating the emission of electrons at the same wavelength as my laser. Yeah. So, this is a, for you know, people, this is for quartz fans, it looks like a piece of quartz is what people are calling it. But... <laughs> um, anyway, and uh, let's see, okay, that's the red one, uh, this one's uh, going to make that other one light up a little better, a little more energy, and they light up in all colors, right, I, I have a blue one too, but I lost the battery part in my mess. So there's something pretty cool, you know. And that's how you tell whether a diamond is a diamond or not. And, of course, you can see the uh, the laser passing through the stone through the planes of cleavage. Right? And the planes of cleavage open outwards towards this part of the, the stone along the pavilion. The pavilion's the the back side of the stone. This was cut by Longwin Corporation, or whatever, in Kowloon, China. Uh, and I have a bunch of their, their stuff. Um, and these are sold as paperweights. Now, the, this one and, and my other bigger ones, I have several bigger ones, many bigger ones, actually, I think, um, are, uh, uh, they come with, a, like, a cube to sit on, and, and uh, it, I have it somewhere in the other room. Um, isn't that cool, huh? That's pretty cool. Look at the, look at the cross across there. <laughs> Those are reflections. and splitting the light up and just passing right straight through it. What's going on is there's double, double covalent bonds in there also. Diamond is really, really clear because of those double, double covalent bonds. Um, and to understand that, you have to um, look at Richard Feynman's um, QED, quantum electrodynamics, 
and it ties in with Albert Einstein's uh, photoelectric effect, and, and it explains why this is so very, very clear. It's a... <laughs> okay, see? You see anything coming out of the end of that thing? You don't. Till I turn it around, you know. Because yeah. laser light's traveling in a straight line, uh, and it's very concentrated. But um, <laughs> you can only see it when it's interacting with something else. Okay? So when I hit that, the electrons in the carbon atoms across there are excited by the, the light, and they, they raise up one notch, just exactly the same as the wavelength here because the light here passes its energy to the atom when it touches. Collapses back into, into nothing. There's nothing in between. It's a, in a magnetic field going round and round and round and round. And, and uh, really, really fast, like um, somewhere between zero and light speed, which is three hundred million meters per second. Right? So so if I look over there on my wall, that took a finite amount of time to pass across that distance. But what you're seeing it hitting is smoke from my pipe, not uh, not like air molecules, <laughs> there just aren't enough air molecules to uh, to do that unless it's kind of smoky or something. And it is a little bit, sm not real smoky, I took a hit right before I started this. Okay, one hit. One hit's plenty. All right, so anyway, diamonds glow in all colors because of the carbon-14. And they're very, 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 very clear. That's how I know that's a diamond, right? Even if it doesn't look like the kind you buy in the store, and I didn't pay a bazillion dollars for it, right? I don't sell them for a bazillion dollars either. You know what I do with them? I give them away. Because... I buy them cheap, and I, I like to uh, watch people smile. I bought them for my research. When my research is over, they become gifts for friends because they're beautiful, and they should be cherished. And so when I give one to somebody, they do. They cherish it. And it retains the value that I put into it. It's got a little bit of money and a lot of love. These are going to become space-based lasers to push light sails across the solar system. Nobody buys bazillion-dollar diamonds, you guys, despite much advertising to the contrary, because they're not rare and they're not hard to find, and people knew that. The people that sell them to you know that, man. I'm sorry, that's true, but it's true. I don't sell them to you, I give them to you, because... Diamonds form in every fault line on Earth. Rivers and creeks and dry washes follow fault lines. Every single one of them. 